Hello and welcome, my name is Sarah and I create mall tutorials for The Sims 4. Um, today we're gonna go and look at how to name your files. It's just very important to make sure that every single mod you create has a unique name and a unique tuning ID so it doesn't override any of the in-game files. We're just gonna go and dive into tools and click on extract tuning then i'm just gonna go and find a file from in game then once you've found the file you were looking for just click on add to current package so for this tutorial i chose the loves outdoor trait and that's just because it comes with sim data and a tuning file and it's very important if you select something from in-game and add it to your package file and then you get sim data that they stay connected and as you can see the instance over here they both have the same numbers so now the question is how are we going to make sure that this trait is not going to be overridden from in-game but that it's becoming a new trait in game so first things we're going into tools we're clicking hash generator. Um, I'm just going to move it over here. And then I'm just going to go and select data here. So here we can see the name of this file. And the name is written over here. And it's also out here. That's what the N says, name. So that's just the name. Um, and as you can see over here, we have the same. And there is name out here. It's also here in this version but i know the previous version it's not in a data file area it's only in t in here so you gotta change it there um but yeah first things first let's give this trait a new name so i'm going into the hash generator then i'm gonna go and put my creator name there so for me it's x o s t r i like to use a underscore after but some creators like to do the double dots and then a space or whatever just do whatever you want to do but i like to use the underscore because it's just it works easier for me and then it's um, important to put down your mod's name so for me this is tutorials s 4s core file um so i'm just gonna shorten it to um t and then s 4s tutorials sims 4 studios and i'm gonna go do another underscore and then say trait because this is a trait then i'm doing another underscore and then the name of the trait so i'm just gonna go and name it tutorial so once you've decided on a name i'm just gonna go and say copy that i'm gonna control click this um and then paste it will automatically update in there and over here um, and then do the same for here. So now we only have a unique name, um, but it's still overriding the game. And I will get into that into a second. Um, but first I wanna explain to you why I named it this way, why I do it this way. Um, it's important to start off with your using your creator name or at least have your creator name in the name somewhere. Um, I like to then, like I said before, name it after the mod that I'm creating because if I create another mod and that mod will also have a trade tutorial in there, then the game is just not gonna know if I have both mods in there um, because it will most likely have the same tuning idea, what we're gonna get into in a second. Um, so yeah, I always make sure to place a mod name in there. Um, and then trade, um, that's just for whatever type it is. Um, so I don't have to like go all the way back and have a look what it is. I can just stay on this side because you have like a hundred files sometimes in here and then it's just easy. Okay, that's a trade. Like I don't have to move all the way back. Um, and then just the name of the trade. So if I have three trades and then one is a tutorial one, one is um, f from my other tutorial se series, Lucky and Unlucky, then I know it's lucky and unlucky and I don't have to go through every single thing to see whatever what was. So that's the naming system that I use. Now to make sure that it's not overriding the in-game loves outdoors trade is going in here, I'm going to select the bottom 64. I'm going to copy that and this is my new instance ID so I'm going to go into here instance and say paste 
I'm gonna go to the same data and also do the same in instance. So now, as you can see over here in the instance, they are still connected and that's very important that it stays that way. Now, for some things, you might need the 32 and not the 64, or you might need the 24, and then you just copy those. I know that text strings always need the 32. Um, tuning ID, I still need to go in and copy that, and then paste that in the corner over here. Now, if I click save, now I'm going to Google and I'm opening this program over here. It's linked down below. It's made by Frank and it's brilliant. Um, I can choose a file over here. It says upload package. So I'm going to upload it. And once you've opened it, it will give you errors if you've done something incorrect. And as I can see right now, I have. Honestly, I've never made a personality trade before. So that's, that's why I made this mistake. I normally <laughs> make gameplay trades. Um, so here it goes. It already says personality traits are known to require a 32 bit instance instead of the 64 than what we used. Uh, so I like to do this every now and then when I've added new things to my mod to go in here and have a check to see if there are any errors. So now I know I made an error and, um, that just means that we need to use uh, this one for the instance ID. So. Now we just got to go and change that. And as you can see, it changed. So we can go and save. And then clicking on that over here, it says reload viewer. And I want you to open it. It will say no issues found if there are no issues. Um, this program, by the way, it works brilliant for just checking on like small uh, things that you might have done wrong, but it won't find like anything in your XML. Like if your mod isn't working for some reason, this program doesn't work to see what is wrong with it. You still have to figure it out yourself, but it's just like little things like before we got that error, like I've never made a personality trade before, so I had no clue. Um, but yeah, so that's how, just how you can look things up to see if you've used the correct um, instance or anything like that. It will also give you an error if you haven't changed these numbers over here. It will say it doesn't match the tuning ID out here. So this is how we create a new file in game. Um, but if we want to overwrite something, let's go to extract tuning. So I just grab one of the interactions that I saw and that's the soccer ball juggle solo. So if for example you're in game and you you, you have this your sims doing this interaction and you just don't like it for some reason, I don't know whatever the reason is, um, and you want to change it then you just got to make sure to leave the tuning ID in the instance alone. The name you can change it to whatever you want to but honestly just leave it as it is. Um, you're overriding a game file like right now if you just leave the tuning ID alone. Um, so for example I, I'm gonna say that I'm just gonna scroll all the way back down and be like oh honestly Elder Sims I don't want them to do this. No, no. Um, I feel like Elder Sims shouldn't be able to juggle a soccer ball <laughs> when they're elders. I don't know. Whatever the reason is, you know, you can just change it. Now, if I would say save and then edit into game, it will just mean that this interaction from game is now changed. So elders cannot do this interaction anymore. Uh, so yeah, that's how you override files from in-game. So now you should know how to create your own unique files and how to overwrite files. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below, or you can go to my Discord and make sure to assign yourself the mod tutorial role. And yeah, I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.